All right, this is Mike. I've got Windows starting here, and while we wait, I'll go over kind of what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to unlock the two dormant cores on a Phenom 2 X2 550 Black Edition. Uh, what this is is it is a dual-core processor from AMD that is built on a quad-core design. What it allows you to do is these two dormant uh, cores that are on this can be activated um, with the right motherboard combination and settings in the BIOS. So what it essentially does is it will allow you to turn this dual core processor into a quad core processor, making it a uh, one hell of a uh, bang for the buck uh, CPU. So let's get started here. Let me spin this around. Windows is loaded. And now I, I'm filming this from another computer and I have the resolution bumped way down on this one so you can hopefully be able to see what I'm doing. And I'll try to go step by step. I keep it under 10 minutes for YouTube, so I'll try to move along here. Cores 2, well, we have it, currently I have it set at the stock settings it would ship with if you were to buy one. Um, you can see I have the stock speeds, 3.1 gigahertz, and it shows AM Phenom 2 Black Edition. So, what we're going to do first is if when you go to purchase this you need to also make sure that you have a motherboard that will allow you to unlock the two dormant cores one of them that does allow you to do it which is the one I chose is the Gigabyte uh, GAMA770T it is it is a only downside with this one it's a very inexpensive <clears throat> very inexpensive uh, motherboard but it only has one PCIe uh, time 16 slot so it will not allow you to do crossfire or SLI. Um, that's the only downside with it. Other than that, though, it's a $79 motherboard. So very, you know, great bang for the buck. Now, the BIOS, this is the one I'm going to show you how to do it for today. There are other motherboards out there, but you'll have to research and look on Google to, to, to find them. Um, but like I said, there is, there's definitely uh, more than just a small handful of them. There, there's quite a few that will allow you to do this. Uh, the stock BIOS it ships with will not allow you to. You need to, first thing before you start, is download this F2C BIOS. And you're going to reflash the BIOS. What you'll do is just go into... Whoops, we're not going to run this. We're going to go into Google. And you're going to search this... If you can read here, you're going to search MB underscore BIOS underscore GA dash MA seven seven zero T dash UD three P underscore F two C. When you search this, uh, this BIOS used to be on Gigabyte's website. Then they took it off the U.S. version, and then you could still get it on some of the, the foreign countries' uh, Gigabyte sites, but even anything to do with Gigabyte looks like they've completely removed it. I've heard it's because AMD doesn't you know, want them having something that supports unlocking their, their dual core into a quad core. Um, however, there's still other places, like you can see the second result, deposit files, it looks like they have it there. So there's still other places you can find it. Just make sure this is the file you're looking for. Once you have that, you just put it on a USB stick and um, put it into the BIOS and reflash it with that file. So once you have the updated one, you'll be able to move on and do this. So I'm going to shut down the computer, uh, have that BIOS loaded on mine so we're good to go, and let's turn this dual core into a quad. Um, while I'm doing that, part of the reason I, while well, I'm waiting for this to, to shut down and boot, uh, part of the reason I made this was back when I went to, to look for this, I wanted to have a, a a budget gaming PC. Um, so I was looking at uh, the Intel versus AMD versus a bunch of other things, and what really caught my eye was the fact that you could turn this dual core into a quad. Uh, you can pick up this. I just basically had this about three weeks ago. Um, you can pick it up for ninety-nine dollars on Newegg. The motherboard for seventy-nine. So you're looking at um, motherboard CPU combo to get a quad core for under two hundred dollars. And okay, first thing we're into BIOS here. Um, motherboard Intelligent this is, uh, Tweaker MIT. We're going to click that. Uh, you're going to go under Advanced Clock Calibration. Now, when I first had my BIOS, this is how I found out you need to update the BIOS. A lot of the forms will tell you to enable Advanced Clock Calibration. 
that is correct. But without the updated BIOS, you won't be able to select this, which is EC firmware selection. You need to put that on hybrid. And you can only do that with the updated BIOS. So hybrid and auto, back out. And now I've already, I, I suggest when you first do this, boot with those settings. See how it makes sure it's stable, make sure it works, make sure the temperatures are fine. Um, like I said, about 80% it seems like it, it, this this does seem to work for. There, it, there's an unfortunate 20% it doesn't, but I don't know if it's someone messing up or, or not following the right directions. Like I said, almost I almost thought I had couldn't do it because I didn't know about the whole BIOS thing. Um, however, I know I can overclock mine. I know it's stable at stock speed, so I'm going to go ahead and overclock it as well. Increase system voltage. Another thing you can do, and I've heard of people doing, is if you can't get it to... If you can't get it to work, even at 3.1 with the quads unlocked, go ahead and increase the voltage. Keep stepping it up by, by you know, 0 0.025. Keep going up and up um, and see if you can get it stable that way. I've also heard some people tell me that they had to increase the Northridge voltage control. And they've had to increase that by 0.2 to get so to set it at um, 1.3. Uh, I, I've never had to do that. I've tried to uh, mess with the Northridge, trying to get a higher clock speed um, than what I currently have it at three point, you know, three three point seven gigs, but wasn't able to get any higher than that. So, anyway, so we have the settings. We're going to save them. And wait for this to save, and then reboot and restart Windows. All right, let's boot up here. Um, but basically, I, the, the, it, it works fantastic. The other four, the other two cores um, have been very stable for me. I've ran them on um, Prime 95 for 12 hours just to make sure everything was right. Uh, temperature readings are the same. Um, I, I, no, no different than what I when I had just the two cores. Um, so it looks like the other two cores don't have any kind of temperature problems. Uh, again, these these other two cores basically it's it's made these were turned into dual cores because for whatever reason they didn't pass. Um, AMD's uh, inspection to turn into a quad core. Um, that's what I keep reading. Everyone keeps writing, but uh, to me, I mean, these things have been overclocked. Everything else, it seems to me that they just, you know, AMD for make finds it easier to make them and then ship them as duals than having to make two different lineups. I mean, to me, I, I can't see how these fail the quality inspection tests when when you're able to overclock them and, and do everything you're able to do with the with the standard two cores. So. Okay, we got this booted back up. Uh, I'll give it just a second to load a few things here. And what we'll do next is we'll pull back up CPU-Z just to verify. I got resolution problems coming up, everything else. Uh, okay. Come on. Wait for this resolution box to go away because I'm running way too low resolution on this monitor. Okay. As you can see, it changes the name now to... The AMD Phenom 2 X4 B50 processor. And under cores, four cores instead of two. And core speed at 3.7. Just to show you, I think I have a little bit of time just to show you that this works. Um, it is stable. I mean, let's open up Prime 95 and just run this for about a minute. I think I have about a minute until it, it's going to, I'm going to reach the. YouTube limit of 10 minutes. Okay, so it's all working. Got everything at 100%. I'll show you. I have <coughs> Everest on my G15. So you can see all four cores, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. And the temperature is currently at 44 degrees. It'll get up to about 48 or so with full load, um, which is way under still what it's what you're able to, uh, what it's rated at. I mean, I've, I've heard you can get them to, to 60 degrees and you're still safe. I would recommend getting an aftermarket cooler. Though. That's one of the reasons it's staying so low. I do have an aftermarket cooler. As you can see, it still has it crashed, still going strong. So this definitely works. All right, let me get out of here before I hit the 10 minute mark. But good luck to any of you that are going to try this. Um, like I said, this is my first PC I've built. I was able to do it. I'm sure you'll be able to. Um, Anyways, good luck to you guys, and have a good one. Bye-bye.